This podcast may contain views and opinions which are those of the hosts and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any local agency, organization, union, employee, or company, including the podcast. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, back to the original opener. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> to part two of our autonom- autonomous vehicle discussion. Yep. Um, kind of wanted, we've been going over that last week. We talked about cruise and the autonomous uh, taxi services, right? Yeah, and there's the multiple taxis. services. Yeah. Um, but robo taxis, and, and we talked about that a little bit last week. And then we kind of got into AB 316. Uh, which is where we want to pick it off today, or where we want to pick it off. What the fuck am I saying? I where we want to start it off today. There we go. Yeah, pick it up. Maybe that's what I, I was trying maybe, to say. Maybe, I where, guess. Where we wanted to pick it up today. <laughs> fuck. I'm all over the place. And leave this in, George. <laughs> no, but where we wanted to pick up today, uh, just kind of back on AB 316, go over uh, what exactly that was. I know we had a little bit of a discussion yeah. um, last week, but... You know, so AB 316, those of you that don't know, Assembly, California Assembly Bill 316, just in, in reading it, you know, really was not just for us. It, that was that was part of it. And by us, I mean um, the workers and, and the safety, the public safety, yeah. but also for the lawmakers. The lawmakers are in agreement with us that they don't have the laws in place at this time to govern um, autonomous vehicles, and we talk, talked a little bit about liability, yeah. right? Who's liable in an accident, all that stuff. They don't have those laws in place. So the bill was kind of two, threefold, right? To protect uh, workers um, and, and you know, control that implementation of that so we can kind of catch up with the technology mm-hmm. to help public safety because these – Autonomous vehicles are not all They're that safe. Not all that safe yet. Not as safe as proposed. Yes. Right? That's um, fair. That's fair. And the third part of that was actually for lawmakers to allow them to catch up and write laws. To implement for the yeah, autonomous to, vehicles. To, yeah, to govern the autonomous vehicles and and, and all that stuff. So th- those were the, you know, the three parts of that bill. You know, like like we had mentioned last week, it you know passed through the House and the Senate, and then um, was vetoed by uh, by our buddy Governor Newsom. Um, yep. We'll get into that politics side of it later, but you know, we we just wanted to talk about that bill and uh, kind of open it up for discussion, man. I mean, it, just in the bill itself, do you think it was? I mean, do you think it was a, a good thing or? I think the right intentions are there for sure. Like they're they're trying to help the labor movement, right? Like the, oh, they're like this technology is fucking it's new, so we're gonna pass this for now, right? So that way we can fucking build some laws to govern autonomous vehicles. Yeah, and then public safety, let it get better. Yeah, you know, let it, it get better before you just throw it out into the public. <laughs> 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 Literally, just yeah. throw it out there. Just throw See it what out happens. There. I don't know. What's a couple deaths? Yeah. yeah. Right? No big deal. No big deal. We're making money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're making money here. We're making money comes at the expense of lives. <laughs> right? So, I mean, in, in in reality, I think the, the bill definitely was was a good one. I mean, it was backed I think by it was Teamsters. Pretty, I think it was pretty good, to be honest. Backed by the labor movement. It yeah. affects a lot of us. Mm-hmm. And even... The people that aren't in the labor movement, the owner operator, truck drivers, you know, they should probably join a union at this point. Yep. Because they're coming for your jobs too. Yep. Um, and it's not like that bill was the 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 end all. Like it was just like, hey, we're just gonna just put this here. Like they're not saying that they can't release autonomous vehicles. It's like, hey, we just want to have a little bit of regulation, a little bit of a safety net to protect the workers, to protect the public, and then you guys can. Throw your fucking vehicles out when it's safe, right? As soon as we make laws, it's free. But they're like, nah, fuck that. Yeah, it's funny because not only that, it, it was also, it, it only addressed vehicles over 10,000 pounds. So we're talking a 
about commercial stuff. That's a hundred percent really, commercial. I mean, how many recreational vehicles are over ten thousand pounds? Like RVs. RVs for sure. The F five fifty. Put a picture yeah. here. The F five fifty. I don't know. Is that over ten thousand? I don't pounds? know. It's I don't huge. Know. It's huge. It's huge. But usually those are used for work. Yeah. So it's right. It's basically a tractor. Yeah. <laughs> it's right? Basically a tractor. So I mean, you look at it, and it was just addressing that. We still could have the convenience factor, which we talked about last week, yeah. which most people are looking for. And we understand that um, it is a generation of convenience. Yeah. Um, I know we've talked about on other shows, we're yeah. going to end up like the uh, like the, the guy uh, in that little chair that. Oh, from fucking Wally. From Wally. Right. We just float around and drinking our food. A million out of pounds and <laughs> our muscles are all atrophied because we don't even walk anymore. Uh, but, you know, that being said, like, I, I think. If that's where it's going, the bill in itself and labor in itself isn't, isn't saying, hey, we never can implement this technology. It was really just uh, something to slow the implementation. Yes. Right? And especially when we're talking about vehicles over 10,000 pounds. That's a big 10, deal. 10,000 to 80,000 pounds. A fully loaded truck can weigh up to 80,000 pounds on the road. I mean, can you imagine? Well, it's more than that. It's 80 tons, right? No, it's 80,000 pounds. So it's 40 tons. 40 tons. Okay. That's a lot. A That's lot a of lot. Weight. So it, it kind of was, was in place to do that, to uh, stop the implementation. But uh, like I said, our, our buddy Governor Newsom went and had a field day with that thing and got rid of it. He did. Kind of a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Kind of. Um, so why don't we get into why he didn't pass it? What What did Newsom have to say? I have the letter here. As he lined his pockets. Wow. <laughs> now back then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Office of the Governor. So September 22nd, 2023, to the members of the California State Assembly. This is long, by the way. You mean- yeah, just read it. Okay. I am returning Assembly Bill 316 without my signature. Among its provisions, this bill would ban driverless testing and operations of heavy-duty autonomous vehicles. Assembly Bill 316 is unnecessary for the regulation and oversight of heavy-duty autonomous vehicle technology in California, as existing law provides sufficient authority to create the appropriate regulatory framework. In 2012, the California legislature provided the Department of Motor Vehicles uh, with the authority to regulate the testing and deployment of autonomous vehicles on public roads in California. As part of its oversight and regulatory responsibilities, DMV consults with the California Highway Patrol, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and others with relevant expertise to determine the regulations necessary for the safe operation of autonomous vehicles on public roads. DMV continuously monitors the testing and operations of autonomous vehicles uh, on California roads and has the authority to suspend or revoke permits as necessary to protect the public safety. Autonomous vehicles technology is evolving and DMV remains committed to keeping our rules up to date to reflect its continued development in California DMV held public workshops with interested stakeholders earlier this year to inform the development of future rulemakings for both light duty and heavy duty autonomous vehicles. This rulemaking will be a transparent public process where subject matter experts and other stakeholders will have the opportunity to shape the regulations related to the state of the safe operations of autonomous vehicles in California. The draft regulations are expected to be released for public commitment. Uh, com- uh, sorry, the draft regulations are expected to be released for public comment in the coming months. In addition to safety, my administrative, my administration has long been concerned with the impact of technology on the future of work. Uh, scrolling. So much so that in 2019, we convened with participation from a variety of organized labor leaders, including the Teamsters, UFCW and SEIU, a robust future of work task force. The effort led to the publication of a report that guides our work on issues of emerging 
technology and its impacts on California's workforce. But our efforts don't end there. I, commit, I am committed to incentivizing career pathways and training for the necessary workforce specifically associated with this technology. As such, I am directing the Labor and Workforce Development Agency to lead a stakeholder process next year to review and develop recommendations to mitigate the potential employment impact of testing and deployment of autonomous heavy duty vehicles. Considering the long-standing commitment of my administration to addressing the present and future challenges for work and workers in California and the existing regulatory framework that presently and sufficiently governs this particular technology, this bill is not needed at this time for these reasons. I cannot sign this bill. My administration remains open to working with the authors, the author, sponsors, and other stakeholders on the right approach to safely test and deploy this evolving technology in California while, do, while also addressing and mitigating any potential impacts to jobs. Wow, that was long. It was long. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, in, I, I guess to sum that all up, he basically told the workers, learn to code. Learn to code. Learn to code. You're a truck driver, but truck driver. hey, learn to code. <laughs> <laughs> Governor Newsom <laughs> told us to learn to code if you're a truck driver and you're going to lose your job, um, which is fucking bullshit. That's what I got to say. Dude. <laughs> and not only that, it, it's it's twofold. So he told us that. Now, um, like I said, this this went this bill went through the House and the Senate, right? And the lawmakers, Congress, who um, you know they, they make the laws agreed and said, hey, we don't have the right framework or structure, as he put it in there, um, to legislate uh, or, excuse me, to uh, govern these this new autonomous vehicle and everything that goes along with it, liability for insurance and all this stuff, right? So they're saying, yeah, we, we probably need to take a second and look at this. And he said, nah, fuck it. <laughs> um, but that being said, I just, you know, it, it kind of leads us into – Politics and, and uh, union business, and uh, it's just kind of sad, you know. It's a bummer that our our own governor doesn't really give a shit about the labor movement. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit about your safety. He doesn't give a shit about pedestrian safety. Right? He doesn't, he doesn't give a shit about the workers. He doesn't give a shit about pedestrians. He doesn't give a shit about implementing new laws to enforce autonomous, you know, to govern autonomous vehicles. It's more like, hey, let's just get that out of the way, and then we'll just send that line off, and we'll start making profits immediately. Yeah, it, it's like I said, it's it's just sad when even the you know the lawmakers are saying, yeah, we should probably take a look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, we should probably just hey, it, like we said in in you know this show in the last, um, it's not like the bill aimed to never allow this technology to come in. Yeah. It literally stated in the bill that it was to take a second and look, to look at the laws, to look at, you know, to look at the safety aspect of things, to, to get it right. Let's just not rush it for profit's sake. Yeah, 100%. Right? And then also to protect some jobs and allow, maybe even what he's saying, to allow uh, people to, to get trained up and to, to learn to code. You know what I mean? It's just like, fuck, dude. So... Uh, Kind of brings us into the politics side of things, and it's I know it's a touchy subject, nasty. We don't want to talk about it, right? But at the end of the day, um, you know, we support people with our votes, right? Yeah. Um, whether that be Democrat, Republican, third party, you know, it whatever. It doesn't really matter. We, we support people with our votes, and it's really time that we as, as Teamsters, as unionists, support people that support us. That's really what it comes down to want to support people that support you um so if you're out there politicians you want to support labor you want labor's vote support labor support labor man support labor look out for their best interests yeah you're talking about people and people's lives and and the whole goal of the, the labor cut down their livelihood yeah the whole goal of the labor movement is to uh you know to get people better pay better benefits to improve people's lives um and when you take a direct stance against it, it's, you're just saying, fuck the people. 
Basically, fuck all the people who vote for me. <laughs> yeah, right? And, and I think we need to do a better job of not being so, uh, and I know this is touchy, be careful with what I say here, but uh, not being so one-sided about things. Like I said, we need to support people who support us. We can't just support people blindly because they mouth, uh, hey, we support labor or whatever. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we support people who vote for bills and who pass bills that we uh, that we recommend or, or whatnot because they're our representatives. Right? Yeah. So we vote these people in and vote to keep them in office if that's the case. And we shouldn't if they don't support us. If they us. don't support us. Yeah, that's right? fair. I mean, like I said, politics is a little touchy. I it's know a people get... Subject. It uh, really is. People get all up in arms about it. But at the end of the day, you should support people who support you. And yeah. when we talk about that in a labor aspect, I mean, this is a, a direct slap in the face. Oh, it 100% is a direct slap in the face. Sabas, why don't you tell us what you think about it? Hey, Gary. Yes, yeah, This is Sabas. I need you to call me back ASAP. We need to discuss something. Talk to you later. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your input on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it just, uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess all that kind of leads into, uh, you know, power in numbers. We talk about, you know, we talk about why we join a union, why we, uh, stick together and we, we unionize, right? We use that power, worker power, power in numbers to combat companies, yeah. right? And we need to do the same thing with politicians. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. It's like, Hey, we will vote for you. We'll put you in office, and we will flex our union muscles, right? Our union numbers mm-hmm. um, to put you in office. But you're gonna you're gonna do what we want you to do. And we we want the people that I mean, want they are to public servants, right? Yeah, but it's like it shouldn't it shouldn't feel like a threat. We should want people that want to be there to help. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, you're. I you're, feel like it shouldn't be like a right. threat. If we want people in there that are gonna help the public. You know. You know. And this <laughs> delves like way into politics, but yeah. I think a lot of people do, you know, in the beginning, I really do. Um, people get into politics and some of them don't, don't get me wrong. But I think a lot of people do get involved to help. Actually make a difference. Yeah. To make a difference. Yeah. And then you get into the system and you get into the mud and the, the muck and then you, know, you get money thrown at you and you get people pulling you in every different direction. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately money talks. Money's a big but that's deal. why we got to flex the union muscles and say, okay, well, if you want to screw us over this time, don't expect us to do shit for you next yeah. time. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, and that's, like I said, that's those are the reasons we join a union and we get together and we coordinate our, our vote and we coordinate, you know, who we're going to support. And we, we do all these things because if not, we get fucked over. A little bit. Stand together or hang alone. Yeah, we need, I mean, what is it like, you know, like a single branch by itself is weak. But if you put like 30 in a bundle and try and break it, good luck. Exactly. You know, we're be- we're, we're stronger together. So let's put 1.3 million together. Yeah. <laughs> Those are just the Teamster numbers. We're not Those even talking just, about that's not uh, even all the union. other unions yeah. that uh, were mentioned in that. Uh, yeah. statement that he put out, which was a chicken shit statement, in my opinion. It kind of it kind of was, right? Yeah. It's like, bro, better. It's like, you're the governor. That's a bull, like, that was, when I was reading it, I'm like, this is a bullshit statement. This guy wants to run for president? Yeah, dude. He just fucked over 1.3 million Teamsters. Well, it's even at that, like, even for his track record, like, for, for COVID wasn't even good. Yeah. Like, he was having issues there. And didn't he also get caught being out Oh, yeah. When uh, he implemented people fucking French laundry. The curfew, curfew, right? Is that the French laundry or some shit like that? Fuck that guy, dude. (laughs) Agreed. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, some of the things we might not think about, um, we we talk about them 10,000 pounds being the limit in that bill, right? Yeah. Um, But actually, we're talking about UPSers, UPS drivers. I guess all package cars. That mean, that would be. Package cars, yeah. That would be UPS, FedEx, DHL. Amazon has package cars now. Average, average package car is 
12,000 to 26,000 pounds. You know what size that is? Because that might make a difference. Well, I would we have, I would assume if it's the average package car. So if you take 12,000, that's probably like a 500. Really? Yeah. Is the 500 weigh that much? I would assume it's a big. I mean, it's not. The 500s don't have the dual wheels, though. They have well, single Maybe wheel. what? You go 600s? It's a six. 600s to 1200s? That's a big deal. That's Yeah, it's almost a whole fleet. Yeah. So it would affect all, what we're going to just deliver out of vans, all of us? Fuck it. PVD that shit. <laughs> right. But right. I mean. But we're drivers. <laughs> yeah. But everyone gets a small van. It's like you the get first a van. Step, right? You get a van. That's like the first step. Like if you look at it from a UPS aspect, from yeah. delivering in smaller, we're not talking about the feeder guys, right? Or the, the long haul drivers or yeah. the ABF guys and all, all, you know, all those guys, right? Now we're talking about package cars, which is a lot of employees. Yeah. Right. In all aspects, like you said, DHL and FedEx and everybody else. Um, now they're affected. So it's the first step to, well, we don't need you to drive the car anymore. Now we'll take you to your next stop. You just get in the back and grab the package. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talked about those robot police officers and robot security uh, last week, right? Uh, what's a robot delivery delivery thing? I don't know. That's a good question. I wonder if it's gonna be like that, uh, like the that Boston Dynamic dog, where you just can go select a package and then. Or who knows? I mean, if with technology, you would assume that maybe the truck just sorts the packages. Everything's loaded into a certain spot. The truck just I mean, spits out the package. You know what I mean? You don't even have to pick. There's no selection. The truck does it. It just pops out here. Deliver this to this house. I don't. Ooh. As as cool as that sounds, there's so much that would have to go into that. I Look at how fast technology is going. Yeah, but there would be there would need to be like there would need to be conveyor belts in there. There need to be there need to be a selector. Be, there needs to be a lot. It, it would be a lot. It would it needs to be a lot. But I don't think it's feasible. That's not out of the realm possibility. Yeah. Right? If they're if they're looking if the if the initial goal is to eliminate that human position, right? Because you want autonomous, you'll work up to it. They'll start small. Maybe they'll get like an arm selector, you know. And so yeah, a exactly. human person will have to still go in and load the shelves up. Yeah. And then an arm will come down and pick something off the shelf, you know. If if the whole truck was skewed out, like if it had positions. Yes. Which it semi does now. Kind but if it's does. like super skewed out where it's like, boop, boop, and then you have a arm loader. I, I've actually seen, I wish I would have got the pictures, but I've, I've seen some video of, a, um, I believe it's Amazon that mm. is now employing uh, robot loaders. Really? Yeah. So it just conveyors the stuff in and the, the arms, there's two arms in there and it just picks it up and loads, loads the truck. So what's, what's the next step? And, and you look at it and is, is the goal just to demolish labor? Demolish That's human what it labor? sounds like, right? That's really what it sounds like. They want to eliminate labor entirely is what it sounds like because, I mean, if you eliminate labor, labor is the majority of the workforce. It really is. You know, so if you eliminate labor, you eliminate their pension, their, you know, their their hourly wage, their benefits, all that stuff. And you have incredibly high profits. And it only goes to the people working at corporate, right? The CEO, president, vice president, you know, treasurer, all the – Stuff down, and then they can start limiting positions at the bottom and at the middle. Yeah, managers, supervisors. Yeah, right. Because now that (laughs) one programmer and now it's like, hey, mechanic. We had we had (laughs) like we had we had like twenty supervisors and then two full time managers and one building manager. We don't got to worry about any of that now. So we'll fire fucking (laughs) ninety percent of of you. We have who are you managing? Exactly. Who are you managing? They're robots. We have a dispatcher for that, and that's done by AI. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like they're limiting all these fucking positions held by working class American. Fuck yeah. Not cool, man. Yeah, uh, it's just uh, kind of scary, right? It is scary. Technology it is scary. Is it's like it's not even it's not even like just with the union stuff. I mean, even for corporate, like that, they have no issue, you know, terminating their own employees. You know, like for the guys at the top, I yeah. mean, they look at it and it's like. There comes a point where the investment in the technology and the upkeep in the technology is 
is less than paying a worker for the amount of time the technology works or even a you know, multitude of workers. Yeah. So if one robot could, let's say one robot could do the, the job of X amount of people, mm-hmm. you calculate how much the robot's upkeep, how much the robot's initial investment, and then you weigh that out against workers, hourly wage, pension, benefits, and once that the scales tip, I mean, you would assume that businesses look at it like, hey, that's just a smart investment at this point, right? No, I mean, I also wouldn't disagree. Fuck the people. I also wouldn't disagree. <laughs> As just being a person, that is a smart investment. But now we have not just that one person's life, but families, you know? So that maybe that, maybe that one guy, like, that that's his one job is his career, and he has a like a fucking family. Like now, there's fucking four people that were relying on that. But those three guys at the top are going to make. <laughs> I mean, I can't argue with that. It's so just invite uh, me to your yacht. Obviously, I'm being uh, you know playing devil's advocate a little yeah. bit. It's just it's kind of sad. You it's know? sad. It's sad. But I I understand the appeal. Like there's a massive amount of money that they want. They want that money. Every year, isn't that the the American, um, the whole plan is like every quarter, we need to make more than last quarter. We need to make more than last quarter. At the end of the year, this year we made this much. Next year we're going to make double that. Like the whole thing is just to well, make to more Well, to grow and, and get and bigger, more. you know, but. And I get that. But at what point is it too much fucking money? And especially if you're not paying working class Americans. So you're just only lining your pocket in the cabinet's pocket? To me, you know. And I guess it's because I have a fucking heart. But to me, I'd rather see a business, if I owned a business, I'd rather see a business, well-paid employees, people that are happy, happy workers, do good, do a good job. Yeah. You know what I mean? I agree. Um, you make money for yourself, great. I'm all for, you know, that. I'm all for, for capitalism yeah. in, in that regard. Like I, I definitely, and that's I, a, I'm that's not what it, for the, you know, for the other stuff. With the knowledge that you're you're taking care of people you know you 100 percent. yeah you're taking care of those people and their families and you're giving them a better life and i'd love to see a, a robust middle class which is i mean the middle class is quick. diminishing at a rapid rate right pretty and soon we're gonna we're gonna go back to just upper and lower we're not gonna have middle class anymore yeah. at this rate you know and that's and i believe the whole issue is that technology is removing that upper class, like they're they're losing touch with the, with the middle and lower class. Yeah, you're right, the, and that's the biggest issue. Those those guys aren't on the floor. They're every not. Day. They have no idea. They are just looking at a spreadsheet with how mm-hmm. much money they're making, and they're like, "Well, how many numbers they're running?" Yeah. Sounds like someone I know. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I don't even know if he watch. He probably does. He might watch. He, he probably watches. Watch, shout out to you. you shout know out to you. You, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it's something that we could talk about for a long time. We definitely, um, it's, a, it's a longer discussion. It's a it's longer a, discussion. It's, it's yeah, a discussion sure. that we need to keep having. Um, so I hope you guys don't mind, but we'll definitely touch on the subject with other guests and other people, and we'll definitely get into that as we, you know, I think for UPS, we've, we've got a strong contract, but we have to look at the underlying factors of things. Like people can, can get a strong contract, but then if like, you know, like the technology comes in and just completely defeats it, that. It'll basically overshoot the contract. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's something that we need to keep talking about. Please, you know, uh, it should be a discussion you're having with, even with your kids, which sounds crazy, but you know, it's a discussion that that sounds insane that you would say that, but it's yeah. like, it, you need to let them know. You you need know? To, they need to understand that technology has pros and cons and you know, what uh, it does to the labor force and what it does to workers and, and society in general. Like you said, we're, we're going to be freaking, uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but that guy, Wally, you know, rolling around in our little floater devices and, yeah. Being fed, I don't know, 
would the government put out like an issue for everyone? I mean, that would be basically what, what, what do they call that? UBI, the, universal basic universal income. Universal basic income. Would you think that would happen? Well, I mean, even if they did, it's just another level of control. Yeah. You know, and this is, uh, it's crazy, but it's why I've had thoughts in my life of trying to be as sustainable as I can, you know, with, uh, or not, I have chickens. When UBI is established, doesn't that fall like under socialism? Wouldn't become socialist at that point. It's no uh, longer capitalist, right? Yeah, no, you you completely get everything from the government. Yeah, you get everything from the government. We, you we go from a, we go from a capitalist society to socialism. They would be like, "Well, you want to be a dick? We'll just shut off your UBI." <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you were mad that I did that I vetoed this bill? Right. We're shutting off your UBI. You should have learned to code, buddy. And <laughs> and <laughs> we're cutting off your travel because you can't use our autonomous vehicles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, right? That's wild. There's so much to it, and it, it sounds like a, a, a nightmare. It sounds like a bad sci-fi film. But, yeah. I mean, it, it definitely could happen, and it seems to be the trend with businesses, at least, with jobs, uh, and obviously with people like our governor that don't really give a shit about yeah, us. It's also not just, I mean, we've talked about this before. Like, we, talk, we had Danny Herbert on. We had Gary Brocken on. Um I mean, even James Lopez, when we were talking about just autonomy, even in the warehouse, right? So I'll put, because I can't put that video up here. It'll get pulled down from copyright, but I'll put a link right here. It'll also be in the description of uh, autonomy in the warehouse. And eventually, that the whole goal, right, is to eliminate the workforce. To eliminate all the workers. Yeah, so I'll put a video here so you can see that they already have some some warehouses that are fully autonomous and it's like they're gonna try and eliminate those working class positions yeah. so we need to Warehouse fucking fight shows. back so we don't fucking lose that well like i said we can talk forever about this um and like we said we're gonna kind of keep the, the segments a little bit shorter going forward at least for now at least for now just let us know if this is something you guys are into if you guys want us to have longer discussions about this just let us know shorter longer let us know yeah we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in every week. Like, share, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, OCST.952 on Instagram. Email us at OCST.000 at gmail.com. Hit us up with all your questions. And with that, we'll see you next week.